Hello and welcome to the Dr. Norris Show. In today's episode, I'm gonna be sharing with you how you can use all of these gorgeous looking foods to naturally boost your immune system. I opened the TV up the other day and there were literally two or three adverts for one supplement helps you boost your immune system, drink this, it will help you boost your immune system. There was so much on the TV, but what is your immune system? Well, let's keep this really nice and simple. Your immune system is a system that gives you immunity from any bacteria, viruses, fungi, parasites, ew, all of the foreign invaders inside of your body. So you can imagine it's pretty important, right? <laughs> one of the main components of your immune system is a cell known as the white blood cell. Now, let's think of an analogy. Your white blood cells are like your internal defense mechanism. They're your troops. They're your troops on the front line that are keeping you nice and safe and strong. So with any troops, you need to make sure that you've got enough of them. You need to make sure that they're working fast enough. And you also need to make sure that they're working efficiently. That's great, Dr. Nora, but what has that got to do with any of this on your table? Well, if I was to tell you that you can actually help to boost your immune system by having things called vitamins in your diet, would you believe me? Yes, I think you would, <laughs> because that is what this video is all about. Vitamins are substances that are found naturally in foods in tiny, teeny, weeny amounts. They help our bodily functions. If we have too many vitamins in our body, we can actually run into medical conditions. And conversely, if we have a deficiency of vitamins as well, we may also end up with some medical conditions. So in saying that, guys, it is super important, and I mean super important, that you consult with your medical doctor or a local nutritionist to find out what your individual targets are for your vitamins. Because some people are quite lucky, they don't need many vitamins, and some people need more vitamins than average. Similarly, if you're on certain medications, like blood thinning medications or cholesterol lowering drugs, your need for vitamins might be slightly different than other people. So before engaging in any change in any diets, please, please, please always seek the advice of your medical doctor or nutritionist. All right, now the disclaimers are out of the way, let's get to it. First up, vitamin A. Now, you might all know vitamin A. Oh, vitamin A, yes, you get that in carrots and that makes my eyesight good. Well, yes, certainly we do know that vitamin A, which is found in carrots, can make your eyesight good and it helps with vision. But did you know that it also helps to increase the production of those white cell counts? Yes, those troops, your army troops. Vitamin A can actually help to increase the production of white blood cells. How amazing is that? But how much vitamin A do we actually need? Well, this does vary according to your gender. And as a rough guideline for women, we need about 700 micrograms of vitamin A a day. And for men, they need 900 micrograms of vitamin A a day. But how does this relate to the foods? How much food should I actually be eating? Well, I will tell you exactly how much. I recently, well, a few months ago, I rediscovered pumpkin. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I always thought that pumpkin was for Halloween. You know, you carve out a jack-o'-lantern, put it on your front doorstep to scare the little kitties away. But did you know that pumpkin is packed with vitamin A? Not only is it packed with lots of minerals and vitamins, but it also tastes delicious. It is such a versatile, vegetable. You can dice it up, you can roast it, you can make a pumpkin pie, you can make pumpkin soup. It is absolutely gorgeous. But for me personally, all I need to have to get my 100% of my recommended daily allowance for my vitamin A is I just need to have 70 grams of pumpkin. Yeah, I know you're thinking 70 grams of pumpkin is like nothing, right? <laughs> so I know personally for myself, I do overindulge a little bit sometimes on my pumpkin because I just love the taste of it. And I am actually allowed to go up to three times more than my recommended daily allowance. So the highest tolerable amount of vitamin A that we can be consuming in one day is 3000 micrograms. In saying that, however, if you do have too much vitamin A, which is 10 times more than the recommended daily allowance, you can really run into some serious medical problems. Vitamin A can be toxic in high amounts. So for example, if you do have lots of it on a regular basis, or if you have a large quantity of it in one sitting, you can actually lead to things like hair loss, coma, and even death in some situations. So it is so important that you make sure you're having the correct amount of vitamin A every day. All right, let's look at the next vitamin, vitamin B. 
B6. Amongst its other properties, vitamin B6 helps promote the production of those white cells. Yes, that is right, your armies are getting stronger and stronger, they're increasing in quantity, all thanks to vitamin B6. But where do we get vitamin B6 in our diet? Well, let's take a little look at this can of tuna. As you can see, this tuna is in spring water. Now, personally, I only eat tuna in spring water because one, it reduces the calories, and two, it just tastes a lot cleaner as well. Tuna in brine can be very salty, and we know that salt can actually increase your blood pressure and it can cause other conditions as well. So I like to steer away from that. And similarly as well, tuna in olive oil, well, there's added calories. Olive oil is great, but in small quantities, but personally, I love my tuna in spring water. This beautiful tin can of tuna, which is 100 grams in weight, will provide me with about 16% of my vitamin B6. Now, I know you're thinking, 16%, that's not very much, is it, Dr. Nora? Well, how about we pair it up with an avocado? Avocados are great. They're packed with lots of minerals and vitamins, and one of those vitamins is vitamin B6 as well. If I was to add this, which is 100 grams of my avocado, to this, my tuna, that's gonna give me an additional 13% of my vitamin B6. So, we're doing pretty well. Now, if you don't want to go for tuna and you're feeling a little bit more sophisticated and you fancy a bit of salmon instead, well, 100 grams of salmon will give you about 30% of your recommended daily allowance. So pairing that up with your trusty old avocado, that's going to give you close to around 50% of your daily allowance of B6. Now, as with any of the vitamins we're talking about today, if you have an excessive amount of vitamin B6, which is classified as being one to six grams a day, then you can lead into some potentially irreversible medical conditions such as light sensitivity and even nerve damage as well. But what does one gram of vitamin B6 translate to on a daily basis? That translates to roughly being about 6,000 cans of tuna. Yeah, I, I love tuna, but I don't think I love it that much. Sorry, I'm just gonna leave that one there. <laughs> Next up is my favorite, vitamin C. Now, how many of you out there have been told to get some vitamin C in you when you've had the cough or you've had some sniffles or you've had a flu? Put your hands up right now. Yep, yep, I, I certainly have. <laughs> but why is that? Vitamin C actually helps promote the production of your white cells. But not only that, it actually helps your white cells to work more effectively as well. Double win, right? How amazing is that? Now, I want you all to take a look at my table and write in the comment section below, right now, which of these fruit or veggies has the most vitamin C inside of them? Let me know right now. Tick tock, tick tock, tick. Okay, time's up. I bet that all of you, or majority of you, would have gone for this, the humble orange. Yes, packed with vitamins and minerals. Go and have an orange when you're feeling like you've got the sniffles. But did you know a 100 gram orange only contains about 80% of your recommended daily allowance for vitamin C. But what's more interesting than that? This, your red bell peppers. 100 grams or a medium sized red bell pepper will contain over 200% of your vitamin C allowance for the day. This, this, that's insane. <laughs> I mean, I can understand that you probably wouldn't really want to pick one of these up if you have got a cold because they don't taste that nice. And this is nicer because it's got sugar and it feels like it's nice and tasty. It's a lot sweeter compared to your red bell pepper. But how does that stack up to the rest of the food on my table? Well, for those of you that like something sour, such as a grapefruit, and I personally don't like grapefruit, I find them very sour. And I think they're really, really palatable if you pour a bunch of sugar on them and, and that really is gonna give you too many calories, so you don't really wanna be doing that too much. Um, but the grapefruit, the humble grapefruit, will give you about 50% of your recommended daily allowance for vitamin C. Hmm, interesting. What about the tomatoes? Maybe is it Dr. Nora, is it just red things that have got lots of vitamin C in them? Well, one medium-sized tomato will contain about 20% of your recommended daily allowance of vitamin C. Now, what is this over here? Broccoli. 100 grams of broccoli has over 140% of your recommended daily allowance of vitamin C. So this is packed with vitamin C along with this. Maybe next time you've got a cold, you can have some broccoli and some pepper, maybe, maybe. Now, of course, as we know, if we have too many of these vitamins, we can run into some nasty side effects. And the highest tolerable dose of vitamin C that is recommended is 2,000 milligrams. Beyond this point, if you have more than this, you might start experiencing some side effects, such as some nausea, some sickness, some cramps, even some diarrhea as well. Mm. But let's put that into perspective. 2,000 milligrams of vitamin C a day equates to 1.8 kilograms of broccoli a day. I'm just going to leave that there. 
My final vitamin is vitamin E. Vitamin E enhances your immune response. So think of your troopers on the inside, they're actually working more effectively. They're working more efficiently. How amazing is that? Now the current recommended daily allowance is for an average adult of 15 milligrams per day. Over here, we've got some almond nuts, we've got some sunflower seeds, and we've got cashew nuts as well. Now, a disclaimer out there for you guys, if you do have a nut allergy, please do not consume any of these nuts. I'll give you alternatives for vitamin E sources in a moment, but going back to the nuts, almond nuts, cashew nuts, and sunflower seeds are packed with vitamin E. If we're to consume a serving size of almond nuts, which is about 16 kernels per day, we're gonna get just under half of our recommended daily allowance of vitamin E. Sunflower seeds, having a 30 grams of sunflower seeds a day will give you about half of your recommended allowances. Cashew nuts are also a source of vitamin E, and if we have about 16 kernels a day, which is your average serving size, it will give you about 10% of your vitamin E allowance for the day. So for those of you out there who've got a nut allergy and you can't have these nice nuts to get your vitamin E quota for the day, well, then I can recommend to you having some avocado. 100 grams of avocado will give you 14% of your vitamin E intake for the day. Now guys, it is so important not to have too much vitamin E, particularly if you're supplementing your vitamin E with supplements over the counter, because studies have shown that if you're having too much vitamin E in your diet in the day-to-day -day lives, then it can lead to an increased risk of having strokes. The absorption of vitamin E is also altered for people who are taking any blood thinning medication or any cholesterol lowering drugs. So it is therefore vital that before you embark on any different changes in your diet that you speak to your medical doctor and nutritionist to get an individualized plan as to how much vitamins you should be taking in your day-to-day -day life. Similarly, with all of these gorgeous vitamins that I've presented to you today, if you are thinking, hey Dr. Nora, I don't really fancy eating a bunch of broccoli or pumpkin, I'm just going to take a supplement over the counter. Supplements that are taken over the counter are not a substitute for having a healthy, balanced diet. That means that there are going to be vitamins and minerals that you're just not getting from those supplements over the counter that are found naturally in foods, which might actually mean that you're going to be deficient in some vitamins and some minerals. And similarly as well, it's a lot easier to overdose on vitamins and minerals from your over-the-counter supplements than it is to have it through your dietary sources through your food. So if you are thinking that you just want to take a supplement just because you know just because you don't like the taste of pumpkin then make sure that you always check the back label to see how much of a percentage is in your recommended daily allowance because remembering guys if you have too much of any of these vitamins they can lead to some nasty side effects all right now that the vitamins are out of the way i'm going to give you a bit of a bonus i'm going to tell you about the minerals that are found in foods that also help to boost the immune system and first up, we're going to be looking at garlic. Yes, I know what you're thinking. Dr. Nora, I don't want to smell. Disgusting. This is not socially acceptable. But what if I was to tell you that garlic can actually help to boost some of those white cells inside of your body when they encounter viruses that cause the common cold or flu? And what if I was also to tell you that having garlic can actually reduce the duration of how long you're sick and also reduces the risk of you getting sick as well in the first place? Now you'll probably be thinking, that's pretty good, that's a good deal, so how much of this do I need to have? Well, you need to have about one clove two or three times a day. Now, the best way to have your garlic is when it's crushed or when it's sliced because then all of the good enzymes are released and it helps to cause all that goodness in your body. Now, if you're like me and you don't really fancy the smell of garlic, and I can understand and I can appreciate that, then you may want to get your hands on some aged garlic. So this is garlic that's been aged for a prolonged period of time, and you can get this as a supplement, and usually these are odorless. So for me, myself, I have got something like that, and this is my tablet here. This is my aged garlic tablet, and it's recommended to have 600 to 1200 milligrams a day. But remember, too much garlic can be bad for you, so make sure that you are only sticking to those one clove two or three times a day to get the full impact of this beautiful, beautiful vegetable? Vegetable. <laughs> okay. Next up is zinc. Zinc is a mineral that's found naturally inside of your food products, and aside from other many benefits it has, it also helps your white cell counts to communicate with one another. That's pretty cool, right? So now my troops can talk to each other, there's more of them, and they're more effective as well. Wow, I've learned so much from this video so far. But how much zinc do we need to have? Well, the current recommended daily allowances for an average adult are nine milligrams per day. And the highest tolerable dose that you should have per day is 40 milligrams. So how does that compare to our foods? Well, zinc is found in tiny, teeny, weeny amounts inside of our food. And let's take a look, for example, where we can find zinc. 
Over here, I've got some oatmeal and I personally love oatmeal in the morning. Bowl of oatmeal in the morning and 100 grams of oatmeal is gonna give me 9% of my zinc allowance for the day. Other foods that contain zinc, well, let's take a look at these lovely mushrooms here. 70 grams of these mushrooms will give me 2% of my zinc allowance. And for those of you meat eaters out there, 80 grams of chicken breast will give you 2% of your zinc. Now, as you can see, these are really small quantities and that's because we don't need an awful lot of zinc in our diets. And remember, if we have too much zinc and too much is over 40 milligrams per day, we can get some nasty side effects such as cough, fever, nausea, mouth irritation, the works. You literally do not want to be overdosing on any of these minerals or vitamins. Okay guys, I hope that you've enjoyed this whirlwind tour of some of the essential vitamins and minerals that we need to help keep our immune system fighting strong and healthy. And as always, if you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to drop me a line in the comment section below. And let me know if you want me to show you how I make my classic pumpkin soup, which is packed full to the brim with vitamins and minerals. If you want to see how I make it, please leave me a comment in the comment section below. But for now, take care and stay healthy.